What's up, guys? So today we got a question from Josh, who's a big fella. He's about 6'3", 240. He's been training jiu-jitsu for a short amount of time so far, right? He just got into it recently. And he's curious because when he's at his gym, his coach is basically always kind of nudging him towards the big guy game, putting a smash on people and kind of you know, winks at him like, this is what, what you should be doing because you're the big guy. You need to be smashing people. But when Josh sort of looks at, you know, videos online and when he's rolling, he says that he tends to prefer things like, uh, you know, playing some of the open guard stuff. He said it, it seems fun. It seems to actually work a little bit for him, even though he's been training for a relatively short amount of time. And, um, you know, he says that when he trains with his smaller training partners, which there's a lot of them in his gym, he says he doesn't really want to just revert all the time to the big smash game and, and that's that. And so he's curious because he wants to be able to beat people with good jiu-jitsu rather than just being strong enough to bench press them. Should I focus my training on the traditional big guy game, quote, big guy game, or should I try to learn some more modern open guard stuff? Um, does my body type preclude me from being effective with things like spider lasso or daily heva or any of that kind of stuff? So basically what he's doing is he's saying, can I, can I be the big guy, quote, big guy, but then play the more little guy games, right? That's kind of what you're asking me, I think. And so, brother, thank you for the question. And I'll say it like this. As a bit, you know, being relatively new to jiu-jitsu, I would always encourage you to sort of get a basis with the full guard. I think a full guard is just a good fundamental position to have down before you start to branch off into the open guard positions where it's much more dynamic. You know, that would be the one thing. But beyond that, you know, jujitsu is a choose your own adventure book, or, you know, if you maybe play video games at some point, when you create a character in that game, you get to sort of level it up in whatever direction you want to. So as you use skills, the particular skills get better, and then when your character levels up, you get to put certain points towards that stuff, you know, uh, towards whatever skills you want to raise, and jujitsu is no different, right? You get to actively work on this. Granted, it's <laughs> it takes a little bit longer, but you get to actively play a role in which direction your game goes into. You know, because again, you know, who you are now and then who you're going to be in a five years from now uh, in jiu-jitsu and really anything in life, right, is going to be a reflection of the information you take in and the actions that you take. And so for you, if you want to go into a more open guard game, you can, right? There's nothing to stop you. You know, your coach may say, hey, listen, here's something I think might work for, might work for you. But again, ultimately, it's your game and you can kind of go in the different directions you want to. I know for me, a lot of times I've had students where I would give them things and then they would go off in a different direction, right? Like for instance, we had one student here who was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and I was trying to show him triangle stuff for some reason didn't take. You know what he preferred? He preferred Kimuras. So we've got this big long dude wrapping around Kimuras and he got pretty good at them. Um, I also had guys where you know I would give them uh, other types of techniques and again they would go off in different directions, uh, in things that I didn't assume they would do. And even me, back in the day in 2009, 2010, I was your garden variety, run of the mill, big guy, brown belt. I was about 225 pounds at the time, bigger guy than I am now. And when I was rolling, I, I did what every big guy did. <laughs> Squeeze and smash, right? Put the smash on people. And that's all fine and good, and I was doing all right with it. But I remember watching, like, 2008, 2009, 2010, watching Andre Gaval come up, come up and make his kind of, that early run as he was coming up in black belt and winning, like, big, big tournaments and stuff. And I love the way that he rolled. He had this beautiful combination of both like smash pressure, but fluidity to it. So he was moving all over the place, but at the same time really pushing the action. And for me, I, I find that game really interesting to watch, especially his passing, and I still do to this day. And so I, you know, when he came out with his Drill to Win book, I bought that book. When he came out with some courses, I bought the courses and started to dig into them, and I started to surround myself with those ideas. Now, I am not by any stretch of the imagination, am I an Andre Gaval by any, by any means, but I, I got a lot from that. And these days, when I roll with people, one of the things that people tell me is that, Chewy, you're like a big guy that rolls like a little guy. You know, granted, I can I have that big game, and I'll t big guy game, and I'll talk about that in a second, why you should have that. But I'm a big guy that can move like a little guy. I, I move much quicker than people a lot of times assume that I'm going to, and that was intentionally done. I didn't always move like that. That was, I wanted to go to that direction. I actively took the information in and put it into action and made myself go that direction. And you can do the same thing. Now, the last thing I would sort of throw at you, Josh, is you want to have a big guy game in your arsenal, as well as maybe a more of a little guy game. I'll just put that in air quotes, right? Because what is a little guy, guy game? I know plenty of guys that are smaller that have a great smash game. But when we get into it, you want to have the ability to smash people and you want to have the ability to be mobile. I know that for me, like I, if I go to an open division, for instance, I might be up against a little small guy. And if I try to match his pace with my small guy game, he's faster. So I got to put the squeeze on him, got to put that smash on him.
On the opposite end, sometimes I go in, I go up divisions. So sometimes I'll compete in like the ultra heavy, which is like unlimited weight, and my smash game just doesn't have the same effect as someone of the same weight or lower weight. And so then I've got to use that fast mobile game to kind of wear out, wear out, uh, wear them out, and chip away at them. And then you know I, I can work that way. And so it's good to have a toolbox with multiple options in it and have multiple games. So this way, you know, every, when the situation arises, if one thing's not working, you can go into a different direction. And so I would tell you, one, listen to your coaches, obviously, they probably have some good insight on the things that may work for you and try them out and see what they uh, see how they work. And I think a, a, a good full guard is good to, as far as on the bottom, is a good thing to start with. But from there, if you start to sort of get the, get a whiff, like you get a scent that you want to follow as far as the open guard and everything else, go that direction and see what happens. Because again, this is your game. This is not your coach's game, it's not my game, it's your game and you can go in whatever direction you want to and you can make your jiu-jitsu and whatever you want it to be. So that's what I would end with, brother, and so uh, hopefully that's helpful to you. And uh, guys, I'll talk to you next time.